you couldn't we couldn't buy the house. We you know if it was a two hundred thousand dollar house and they wanted uh, one thirty for it or something like that, and we needed about twenty in repairs, it, it wouldn't work because we didn't have the capital. Um, so I would then ask them if they were open to some type sort of um, investment sale, and just explain to them it means we'll pay you monthly until we can pay you off in full. And um, most of them say no. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, your host, and I am so excited that you have decided to join in and listen in or watch this episode because on this episode, I've got some dear friends of mine, coaching clients that have already raised in a short two and a half years, $2.9 million in private money. That's almost right at $3 million. And check this out, over $1 million of that private money, they have raised directly by using and having and hosting private lender luncheons. So we're going to dive deep in this episode on exactly what are private lender luncheons and how you too can utilize this strategy to raise millions of dollars in private money for your real estate deals. Now, my guest, this dynamic duo, the guy retired from the railroad, working for the railroad in a short, oh, just, um, I guess it was about a year. I'll get him to remind me when we bring him on of when we started working together. He's now, he and his wife, full-time in real estate, and they live in this little teeny tiny town called Poplarville, Mississippi, population 3,700 people. Put your seatbelt on, don't go anywhere, and listen, you're about ready to meet my good friends Banjo and Erica Carmadale right after this. Joe and Erica, what's up, what's up, what's up? Hey, what's going on, hey, Jay? Hey. Good evening, brother. <laughs> My lands, it's so good to see you here. Thank you for joining me here on the show, Raising Private Money. And did we have a fantastic time last week at the Mastermind and live event here in Eastern North Carolina? Absolutely. It was great, man. Yeah, it's always so energizing to go back over there. Yep, for sure. Well, I want us to dive in today on today's episode about private money as as in using and how you all have used private lender luncheons to raise so much private money so quickly. Uh, but before we dive into using that strategy and, and how and why that's worked so well for you, take us back a couple of years. What was your real estate investing business? What did it look like before private money? So before, before private money, it was very tough to um, to get deals simply because we didn't have a bunch of money. Everybody mostly wants cash. And uh, so when we're on the phone with these people, if they weren't open to some sort of terms, it's pretty much a no-go deal, um, especially since we was working mostly with FISBOs. So it was a lot of calling out, a lot of, a lot of uh, phone time, a lot of negotiating. And we were, um, when we were hitting it hard. We were still tracking about one house per month. We didn't do it for long though, but when we were, when we were hardcore at it, we were still tracking one house per month doing it that way. Um, but we were relatively shackled to the terms business, uh, because we didn't have the, the capital, you know, to just go out and buy a, a bunch of houses. Well, now tell everybody, what do you mean when you say you were shackled to the terms business? <laughs> so basically, even if I were to find a, a seller that wanted cash and it was a decent deal. This was before I knew a bunch about wholesaling as well. You, you couldn't, we couldn't buy the house. We, you know, if it was a $200,000 house and they wanted uh 130 for it or something like that, and we needed about 20 in repairs, it, it wouldn't work because we didn't have the capital. Um, so I would then ask them if they were open to some type sort of um, investment sale 
and just explain to them it means we'll pay you monthly until we can pay you off in full. And um, most of them say no. There's very few of them that are open to that kind of terms. Those yeah, terms. Uh, I've reviewed and, and my, Carol Joy and I, we've been investing in real estate here in Eastern North Carolina full time since 2003. And so um, like you guys, I mean, I've reviewed thousands and thousands of property lead sheets where we have talked with an off market seller, gotten information on their property, gotten their story, what's their motive for selling. And then I'll come down. And, I mean, if, if someone has an, a mortgage, the first way I want to buy it is I want to buy it subject to the existing note. And that is they sell me the house and, and they agree to leave the mortgage in their name. I'm going to make the payments or seller financing. So my experience after reviewing thousands of property lead sheets is only 13% uh, of a for sale by owners will sell to me creatively. The other 87% require all the cash. And, you know, I've heard it said so many times, I'll say, well, you know, I just want to do the terms business and I don't need private money for, for the terms business. Well, that's your business decision. If you only want 13% of the deals out there uh, from the FISBOs, of course, if you're buying anything in the multiple listing service or bank owned properties or anything like that, of course, you got to have all the, all the cash. So um, does that percentage sort of match up to what your all's experience has been there in Mississippi? Yeah, roundabout. That sounds about right. And then it, even if you, you know, we're trying to go traditionally with the bank, now you're dealing with all kind of different uh, red tape, people in the middle, all kind of different fees. And uh, your, your motivated sellers are going to somebody else. They're not sticking around for 45, 60 days waiting for you to come through. Uh, especially if you're having to rely on a traditional bank to get it done. So cash, the cash is where it's at and private lending is a way to get capital for your business and, and a way for private lenders to, to gain a bunch of value as well, I mean, especially in the market today. Yeah, what I really love about it is that um, we're able to meet the seller's needs. You know, if they want terms deals, sometimes that works good for the seller, but sometimes they need the cash fast. And so um, it's just really good that we can just meet them where, they, wherever we need to uh, help them at. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, countless deals that I can think of to where I was negotiating or my acquisitionist was negotiating uh, with a seller. And, you know, if you didn't have all the cash, you're just going to miss out on the deal. So let me ask you, let me ask you all a question. Why is it you hear from some folks, their advice is, and it just drives me crazy. Their advice is, Oh, just get the house under contract. Get the house under contract. The money will show up. Um, did you ever hear that? I've heard it a few times, but it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. <laughs> it's like, where is it going to show up, right? Right. right. <laughs> I mean, just think about how more confident people, real, new real estate investors particularly, are how much more confident they're going to be on making more offers when they've got the private money burning a hole in their pocket. Well, Banjo and Erica, let's, let's get everybody plugged into how to get private money burning a hole in their pocket. All right. I want to give away for free right now my money guide. You can download this. It's an ebook. Uh, it's called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Business. If you want to get on the fast track to getting private money, simply get right on over to Jay Connor, and I'm an ER, not an OR, Get on over to jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide, and you can download that right away. jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. So Erica, Manjo, I hear this all the time. I hear from new real estate investors who in the world would loan, why in the world would a private lender loan me money? And I've never raised private money before. Right. So first of all, did that go through your all's minds before you started raising private money? Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> right. So that went through your mind. I've never raised private money. Why would they loan me private money? So walk us through those steps. How is it that you were able to get uh, private lenders to loan you money and you'd never done it before? 
Main reason is because they trust us. It's our warm market. They know what kind of people we are, uh, whether it be flipping houses or in real estate or at church or at our house, at a birthday party. They just know what kind of people we are, and they're in our warm, warm market. The second most important thing I think uh, that all my private lenders want is the security. And the fact that we secure the note with an actual piece of property uh, it, it, with a large equity cushion really helps them make that decision, especially with the high rates of return. Yeah. What advice would uh, you all give um, a real estate investor, whether they be new or not, but they've never raised private money, given your experience uh, and how you you know went about doing it? What advice would you give us? I mean, what's the first step? In, in getting this private money thing going and, you know, what kind of process would you advise they need to have in place, um, you know, to be successful doing it? Hey, you answer that one? <laughs> I would say the first step would be to get a list, uh, make a list of people that you know and uh, make sure you're not pre-screening people. You have no idea who has a retirement account or liquid capital or uh, maybe a future investment coming, uh, you know, freeing up or something like that. So don't, don't pre-screen anybody, but make a list, make a big extensive list. Uh, doctors. Now, now where do you, where, where, where would they get this list from? Well, to we make are, a list of like potential private lenders. Okay. Basically you can look for it in your cell phone and your Facebook. And as you say, Jay, your real Facebook friends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so when Erica and I first started, um, raising money, one thing I, I did was I looked at my Facebook account and I also looked at my cell phone and she looked in her Facebook account, her cell phone. Mm -hmm. I like calling people and talking to people. Erica's more along the lines of let me just message them. So right. she would message, right. you know, people on Facebook, let them know that, you know, because a lot of people didn't even know that we were in real estate nowadays. So she would let them know, hey, I don't know if you knew or not, but we're doing real estate and uh, we got a phenomenal private lending program. Kind of go over it just a little bit to see if they were interested in it. And um, those who so were. So let's make sure everybody understands this. Um, one of the big keys to you all having such phenomenal success, raising millions of dollars in private money pretty quick, is you weren't reaching out initially, and you may still not. I don't know. You're not reaching out to do business with people that's already loaning money out. No, You sir. started by... So, so who are you reaching out to, right? If they're not already loaning private money, then who in the world are all these people and, and what do you do with them? That's the cool thing about private lending is that it's just ordinary people. So it's friends, family, uh, people that we meet in different social clubs, birthday parties, um, the gym. So um, we're finding that it's just ordinary people who are having trouble finding uh, simple ways to get high rates of return safely and securely. And they are thrilled when they, we tell them about our program. So it's just so important that we're getting the word out because when we first started, people didn't know what we were doing. Um, and there's only one way to, for them to know, and that's to tell them. So um, just getting the word out, letting them know what awesome program we have uh, has really made a difference. So you're making your list. So to recap what you said, your advice, don't rule out anybody, right? Because you, you, you don't know what they have. Do you, is it a good idea or not necessarily? Is it a good idea to start making a list of retired people on your list? And if so, why? Sure. Because the retired people have a 401k or an IRA that they had with their former company. And let's say, you finally get to retirement and all of a sudden the market is taking a dive like it did last year. So many people have told me that they've lost tens of thousands of dollars in their 401k and IRA. I was speaking with a, a, a new private lender just two days ago and he's, he don't know what to do because his IRA is taking a dive. And uh, I mentioned this private lending thing to him, called, called him on the phone. Like I was telling you, he was probably on my list of people that I know. And, uh, you know, two, a year and a half, two years later, he remembers that. And he called me up and he was kind of telling me about his situation. And I said, man, I can, I can do better than that. He said, well, that's why I'm calling you. So, um, yeah. Well, you know, it's funny. Just this past weekend, um, after church, uh, Carol Joy and I went out to dinner with some good friends of ours that we go to church with. And uh, she's a realtor. 
and he works for civil service over at Cherry Point. And he is 50 years old. And he's got a little over, excuse me, <laughs> he had <laughs> over $530,000 in his retirement account from working at civil service um, last year. And he said, Jay, and, and so there, there's more than one story or takeaway from this story. So anyway, he says, after a church this past Sunday, he said, my account has now dropped $100,000 in the past 12 months. So he okay. says, I got to do something. He says, I got to get it out of there. Yes, sir. And, you know, interestingly enough, he met me for coffee and he had a friend that he works with uh, at civil service as well. And my good friend had heard about my program, but really didn't have a motivation or a need to, you know, start investing with us in our private lending program. Right. And, um, but his friend did. And so I met him at Starbucks. This was probably six months ago. And so we sit down at Starbucks. And, and so I'm telling my friend's friend how the program works and et cetera. So here we are six months down the road. And my friend that invited his friend, because it was his friend that had a need. Now, my friend six months down the road is saying, I've lost over 20% in my retirement account, and now I got to do something. So there's two or three different lessons from the story that, that you all are sharing and that I'm sharing. Number one, a lot of times private money does not happen overnight, right? That's correct. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of planting seeds. You, ne you never know when that seed's going to take root. Um, so that's not necessarily overnight. I mean, you all have probably had some private lenders, people in your warm market that you have an association with that you've taught about private money. They didn't come around until what? A year later, two okay. years later. Sure. Right. Erica, tell everybody about you, about your daddy. <laughs> and, by, and by the way, congratulations. You all are now a best selling published author. <laughs> I don't know if you got your book handy. You should certainly talk about your book that you've got published. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, Erica, your own dad took a, took a while to come on board, right? My dad took a very long time to come on board. <laughs> uh, you know, just plant those seeds, I guess. I would always speak to my mom on the phone and just kind of keep her updated with what we're doing. Just, um, you know, normal conversation. And one day I said, hey, uh, mom, we're publishing this book. And she's like, oh, okay, that's nice. And then the next day I called is just everyday conversation. I call my dad answers the phone and he says, so tell me about this lending program you have. Can you give me some more information? And we invited him to the luncheon and then he pledged some money. There you go. But what's the name of your book? Cause people can find it on Amazon and, mm -hmm. and the book is written that teaches people that want to be a passive investor, how they can get high rates of return in this private money. So tell everybody about your book. It's called Low Risk High Returns, and it's exactly what you said it is. It's all about uh, it's all about our private lending program, and um, it kind of it kind of explains how private lender lending works, who a private lender is, how a private lender is protected, how we run our private lender program, and it serves two purposes. One purpose is if private lenders who are interested in, in becoming a private lender can learn a lot about it, and then also real estate investors who want to learn how to uh, to, to get some private lenders can also learn some things from it. So uh, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, <laughs> so you, you want them to go to Amazon and get your book or can they just contact you and you just mail them your book for free? Either, <laughs> e, 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 <laughs> yeah. Either way is fine. Uh, contact me www.saltandlightpropertysolutions.com forward slash low risk high returns, or you could just go to the main website or yeah, it is on Amazon as well. So either way is fine. All right, so people can get your book at www.saltandlightpropertysolutions.com. Again, that's saltandlightpropertysolutions.com. And um, how did you, why and how did you name your company saltandlightpropertysolutions.com? So Salt and Light Property Solutions, if you're a Christian and you read your Bible, you already know. But it comes from Matthew, I believe it's chapter 5, 
uh, verses 13 through 16, uh, where Jesus talks about it, we are to be the salt of the earth and we're to be the light of the earth. So just like you wouldn't take a lamp and put a shade all the way over it so it doesn't even give light, you wouldn't do that, you, you know, us being Christians. So I did ask my pastor, though, <laughs> before I named my company that I didn't want to do anything wrong in the eyes of God. I wanted to actually glorify him through this. And like, quite frankly, we're all human. We all have um, uh, what you call it, like uh, temptations and stuff like that to uh, have a, a worldly perspective instead of a, a everlasting perspective. And quite frankly, naming my company that has really blessed us because it holds us accountable um, when we're operating. So. Well, that's a beautiful, um, beautiful story of how you came up with your company name. And yeah, Matthew chapter five, that's straight from uh, the Sermon on the Mount. Yes, sir. Uh, that uh, Jesus uh, Jesus was teaching from. Um, question uh, and, an, and an answer for the benefit of new real estate investors, people that are interested in um, getting their first deal using private money. We know having the money on hand is what's really going on out here in the real world. What advice would um, both of you give to a new real estate investor that's never raised private money? I mean, what should they do? So you started answering the question, make a list. So yes, make sir. a list from your contacts. And so you got that list put together, retired people, whatever people that you really know. So they got their list put together from your own personal experience on raising private money. What do they do with that list next? For example, how do you even start a conversation with, I mean, my guess is all this, three million dollars you've got in private money my guess is none of these people had ever heard of private money none of these people had ever heard of self-directed iras until you put on your teacher hat and you taught them is that right yes sir, yes, sir. so how do you start conversations with potential private lenders that don't even know what it is how do you even get that conversation off the ground it might seem like it'd be a tough thing to do, and uh, possibly in the beginning it was, uh, especially if you're a brand new real estate investor. But first thing I would say is just have a small conversation with them, chit chat with them for a little while, ask them how the dog's doing, how the kids are doing, or whatnot. You know, I mean, these are all your warm market. You know them. Call them up and and be yourself, and then ask them if you know, or or basically let them know. Not sure if you know this or not, but we've been doing real estate lately and I got a phenomenal private lending program. So then again, you have to make sure you establish an actual private lending program. Make sure you know it very well in case they have any questions. But obviously, they're probably not going to know what private lending is. And um, if they ask you what it is, you basically say, well, you might not be interested unless you answer yes to the following question. And the question is, do you have any retirement accounts or liquid uh, capital or liquid investment? capital that's not getting you high rates of return. And the key here is safely and securely. And if they answer yes to that question, you know, then you would want to um, either explain to them how your private lender program works, or if you're doing like me and Erica has done probably eight times by now, invite them to your next private lender luncheon so you can take a real deep dive into your private lender program. Yep. And so Eric usually does the phone method. He likes to call people up and speak to them. I'm more of the introvert, um, indirect method. So a lot of times I'll either uh, send a text message or uh, so contact them on social media and just say, um, hey, do you know someone? Because maybe um, some people might feel like you're um, pressuring them a little bit. Maybe if you're direct with them, at least that's just my thoughts. But uh, <laughs> so if you say, hey, if you have a friend um, who has some some funds that they uh, aren't making a high rate of return, you know, I'd love to tell them more. Um, so that way they don't feel so pressured to give you a yes or a no. Um, and sometimes they say, yeah, me, I'd love to know more. So love I it. I think it's important too, Jay, you know, private money is no question really blesses us and really benefits us in our real estate business. But and, and so as a new investor, you might have a tendency to, uh, you know, do the traditional way. When you go to the bank, you got to beg for money and please, please, please help me, help me, help me. But what, what, what you really got to realize as a new investor who's raising private money, it's uh, these private lenders that are coming on board are not just doing it because they love us and they want to help us. They're doing it because we're providing a real value to them. You cannot find uh, a, a, 
you cannot find an investment. I mean, maybe maybe you can. I don't know of any. Or are you going to get, I don't know, right now we're giving 8 to 10%, depending on a deal, and it's secured by a piece of real estate. You can go put your hands on it if you want to. You know the people that you're investing with. And, um, I mean, they, they really, really love that. And these people that we're dealing with, most of them, they're losing money. They're, they're not just not getting high rates of return right now. They're actually losing their principal. And as you know, when you're doing private lending, you don't lose any principal. Your principal stays the same. You just you just make high rates of return. And so it's a phenomenal thing that uh, we're doing for, for yeah. our private lenders. And too. I think that's when it really clicked for me and became a passion of ours. Uh, I realized that we were helping the community by fixing up the houses. We're helping people who can't usually get a mortgage get into a house. Um, sellers, we're helping them with their house issues. And then we're helping these private lenders get high rates of return. And when I realized that we, we have team members now that we're helping with jobs. And so when I realized that our whole business is built around helping people, it was just such, it became such a passion of mine that this isn't work. This is us. This is what we do. And I think that's what's really made us unstoppable. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. Well, I mean, you know, you're making an impact. Yeah, I mean, you're making a difference. Um, you're giving back to the community. And, you know, Carol, Joy, and I, over the years, we have received thank you notes. I mean, we've got 47 private lenders. Uh, we've received handwritten thank you notes as to how we have actually changed and made a huge difference in people's retirement years. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, um, we've got one private lender. Uh, he and his wife are in Mississippi. They, uh, they have over a million dollars with us between their liquid capital and their retirement funds. And just last year, they made between 70 and $80,000. Yes, sir. And um, some of it tax free, tax deferred money. Some of it was ordinary income through the private lending. But they have told us repeatedly, Jay and Carol Joy, you have changed our retirement years. And stop and think about that. They've changed our real estate investing business, yeah. doing deals I couldn't do if I didn't have the private money. We're changing their retirement years. And of course, as you said, this just isn't for retired people. I mean, they can use their retirement funds. They can use their investment capital or what have you. Well, there's all kinds of ways to raise private money. What is your all's favorite way to raise private money? I think I got a guess as to the answer. We love to do private lender luncheons. Uh, those are absolutely fun for us. I like to set them all up and, and get the people there and, and feed them nice and good food. <laughs> Well, give us some highlights. Somebody that's listening has never hosted a private lender luncheon. What is it and what happens at the luncheon? So private lender luncheons is a, a way to get a handful of people or, you know, 10, 15, 20 people together who are interested in private lending. They, they like the concept. They just don't understand it enough or, um, or they might, you know, be on the fence possibly. Basically, it's people that have said, yes, I'm interested, or quite honestly, sometimes it's just people who are hungry for lunch <laughs> because uh, we invite a lot of people who aren't interested in private, lend private lending and they want to just come eat and hang out with us because, you know, they're part of our warm network. And by all means, come on down and, and eat some lunch with us. But we sit down, we feed them some really, really good food. Uh, and then we network a little bit. I have my uh, my team members there and my extended team members. So we got our attorney, our CPA, um, our realtor, our acquisitionist, and the whole the whole gamut, project manager, and everybody. And after they're almost done eating, I'll get up there and I'll throw on the private lender presentation and I'll explain to them in detail all the facets of private lending right there. And then they're able to sit down, kind of absorb all the information. I give them pens and pads so they can write down their notes. And then um, I'll, I'll, afterwards, I invite them to a confidential one-on-one -on -one conversation. So that way we can dive deep into their particular situation and their predict particular investment goals and see if we're a good fit. Do you ever feel like you're selling, chasing, begging, persuading because when I when I first started out, I never forget it. My very first private lender, potential private lender, he wasn't a private lender yet. Um, I approached 
I was sort of nervous about it because, you know, I had never done it before. Right. But, um, but I learned, I learned quickly. I can't be rejected if I'm not asking for anything. So talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So, um, I, we don't ask, we don't like pitch a deal or, uh, go out and get private lenders who are already established or anything like that. So it's more along the lines of us basically just teaching our warm market and the public people that we know and trust how private lending works, what our private lending program looks like. And then if they raise their hand to learn more, then of course we're going to teach them some more. And that's just basically organically how it works. Uh, we don't find ourselves out there, um, I guess, asking for money per se. The, most of the time we're out there teaching people how private lending works. And uh, once they really realize how it works and they're, and they're educated about it, uh, a lot of times I, I get the answer, well, that's a, how can I lose? Sign me up type thing, you know, like it's just mm -hmm. kind of too good to be true type thing. So, right. Yeah, we just want to, we want it to be where it's a win win situation, you know, like not only are we winning by getting their private lending um, funds, we, they're winning by getting the interest. We want them to be just as yeah. happy as we are. Absolutely. Well, now you live in this town, Poplarville, of 3,000 to 4,000 people. Small, small, small town. And you mentioned earlier, you've already done eight private lender luncheons. Like after the first one, two or three luncheons, I would think you pretty much exhausted your cell phone contacts and your Facebook friends. How in the world do you keep finding people to fill up a private lender luncheon? You already invited everybody you knew the first two or three. So we know a lot of people. How many, <laughs> how many people do you think were at our wedding? Oh, do I don't know. Like, I'm not sure. Okay. 300 maybe? Was, I think it was around 300. That, yeah. that number sounds familiar. So, like, we know a lot of people. We have a big family between the both of us. We have a lot of family. And then, of course, some friends. And um, what needs to happen when you run out of that warm market list or the people that you already know is you got to get good at making new friends. And in business, you call that networking. And quite honestly, when I first started this business and I was told about networking, mm -hmm. had no idea how to do it, why am I going to do it, and really what it even is. Uh, but you really learn fast once you become an entrepreneur and you start becoming parts of these different organizations like the Rotary and networking business referral type organizations. Um, you got all kinds of them out there. And then you start realizing the real... Uh, I guess the need to network as an entrepreneur. Otherwise you, you don't, you don't have any other warm market to reach out to for anything, whether it be a house deal, sellers, uh, private lending, anything. Perfect. So the way you keep filling these private lender luncheons is you just, you just keep growing your network. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's it. Well, and also if you have a private lender luncheon scheduled on the calendar, you got the venue reserved, you got the food ordered, and your luncheon's not filled up yet with 20 or 25 people, um, you may find some creative ways to get it filled, right? Absolutely. <laughs> I make friends very easily when I start inviting people. When I plan that lunch and I'm like, I am not going to have only five people here. Let's see who we can make friends with and feed and, and get that support. Yeah, it's like uh, it's the same kind of feeling you get when you actually have private money sitting on the shelf. If you don't have private money sitting on a shelf, meaning that you have somebody somebody's private lender funds, then they're counting on you making them high rates of return, just like you said you were going to do. And it's sitting there in their bank account earning either nothing or close to nothing. And it's up to you to go find a deal. It's amazing how quickly you're going to find a deal. And uh, it's the same thing when you have a private lender luncheon and maybe one or two people dropped out or you just kind of holding yourself to the fire and schedule it before you have it, have the seats filled up. You know, we do jujitsu and, and, uh, and the martial arts and stuff like that. And there'll be several people in a gym or just anywhere, you know, pick a spot that you go and you might notice yourself thinking to yourself, man, I'd like to go talk to that guy and see what he does and kind of network with him. But the human and the introvert in this pot might, we not, not, might not have enough motivation to go over there and actually <laughs> initiate that conversation. 
But let me tell you what, partner, if, when you have a private lender <laughs> luncheon scheduled and you have empty seats, it's no problem at all. You just walk over there, introduce yourself, and hey, you might not be interested in private lender luncheon, but you know, that might be the motivation to get over there, but you really never know how you're going to be able to bless somebody in their life. I mean, that guy uh, might have been an air conditioned service tech in a certain area that you have a house that these air conditioned work, and boom, now you created a relationship. And anyway, so that's how it works. Yeah, you got to grow your network for sure. I love it. Um, so if you are listening to this episode and you are interested in passive investing and you want to learn more about what this private money and private lending thing is, or you know someone, a friend, a family member that is just like sort of sick of losing the value in your stocks and mutual funds, like over 20% in the last year, and you might be looking for a more reliable and safe place to put that uh, backed by real estate. Because when you're in the stock market, all you got is a certificate. That's all you got back in it. Then my recommendation is to ask and request for Erica and Banjo's new book. And you can get that at www.saltandlightpropertysolutions.com. Banjo, Erica, parting comments. Man, Jay, we really appreciate you having us on the podcast. It's an honor. It's exciting to be with you again, even though we was with you last week. <laughs> Can't get enough, uh, and we're honored and, and uh, really pleased that you invited us here. Thank you. Can't thank you enough. Thank you. Brother. You got it, Erica. Oh, thank you so much for having us. It was all. It's always fun sitting down and having a little conversation with you, and hopefully, some people got some nuggets out of uh, this podcast. And we're just glad that we could help. You got it. I know they did. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me. Well, there you have it. Another amazing episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor your host here for the show, and you are not going to miss out on this. This next episode that I have coming up, in fact, I'm so excited about it, I can't even tell you what it's about. I'm just going to leave it as a cliffhanger. But anyway, so you don't miss out on the upcoming episode, be sure and follow me if you're listening to iTunes. If you're on Spotify, be sure and follow me. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, be sure and tap click ring that bell so you don't miss out on the next upcoming episode. I'm Jay Connor. So excited that you enjoyed us here and I'm wishing you a very profitable future by getting all the private money you would ever need or being that passive investor, getting high rates of return with my friends, Banjo and Erica Carmadale. See you right here on the next Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.